from uh, one Michigan State guy to another, Kirk Cousins, to Damon Bethea, former Michigan State basketball players in studio with us because uh, he's bringing some uh, some international ball to Kansas City. Damon, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. That's a, but it's a few generations between me and Kirk Cousins. Yeah, yeah. Michigan State. You didn't have to tell people that. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, got that nice the, voice. Yeah. That thought, you know, hey, this guy, all right, here we go. It's the same era. I didn't want to, you know, trash on a Michigan State guy. Then I didn't know how to segue to it nicely to you, you know, without... You know, hurting your feelings. You want to do the Kirk Cousins dance in the studio? (laughs) Lose that shirt and get a chain in here? I'm not taking my shirt off. (laughs) I tried, man. Thank you. I don't have a chain. (laughs) (laughs) So Damon's with uh, World Vision Sports and Entertainment, and they announced uh, this week uh, a series of international uh, basketball events are going to take place in Kansas City. Another uh, big-time event coming to uh, Kansas City. I think Kansas City, Damon does an awesome job of hosting obviously the draft coming up in a couple of weeks. But um, if there's one city that likes to put on sporting events, I think Kansas city does it pretty well. Yes. Uh, Kansas city is, is hot and popping in the sports department. That is for sure. Um, and, you know, I have to take my you know hat off to, you know, obviously what Kathy Nelson is doing down with the sports commission and obviously visit Casey. And then obviously, um, you know, mayor Lucas, you know, getting behind us and, and really, you know, pushing this to the forefront and and what we're you know what we're doing um, right now has been uh, it's been pretty it's been pretty good thus far. All right, describe uh, the 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 types of teams that are going to come in here and play. This is this is world. Yes. This is FIBA basketball, right? Correct. These are these are uh, international uh, teams that will be coming in to uh, play a series of kind of small tournaments. Uh, yes, it'll be pool play. Uh, so let's start at the the beginning with it. Um, you know, it's just like Olympic play. So we have, you know, teams that are coming in that are FIBA, you know, FIBA accredited. They're national teams. They're senior national teams. So all these teams are trying to get a spot in the, the World Cup, which is coming up, you know, this year, or they qualified already. Uh, they're trying to get to, you know, figure out their way into the Olympics or they're in a grassroots state where they're trying to really uplift their basketball. So you'll see those teams, um, you know, play uh, down at Municipal between June, July, and August. And then in our September series, we bring in pro clubs from around the world uh, to come, and they, they're trying to get themselves together for before their season starts. It's kind of a, um, kind of a warm-up to that. But these games are all like friendlies, um, just kind of, almost just like the soccer format. Uh, but these are some of the games that, uh, you know, FIBA and basketball is starting to go, on, go to um, right now. And um, we're just fortunate that now we're going to be able to do this in the United States Historically, I've done these in China um, after, you know, I've been to China 48 times. So uh, twofold. One, Kansas City is a great spot to have it. And two, uh, I'm tired of traveling. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, as, as you mentioned, these these games have not been played in the United States typically. No, not not typically. It's been, you know, we've been doing these eight nation events in China. Uh, and then obviously COVID had us re you know, we had to redirect what we were doing, and um, you know, we haven't been able to really travel. Nobody's been really able to travel around the world to do a lot of things until things have just started really opening up here lately. So um, it's been uh, it's been a whirlwind, and you know, now we're here and um, we're excited, and uh, I think that uh, we have an excellent uh, opportunity to really, you know, put a brand of basketball uh, into infused into our area that is is missing. You know, from the pro level, all the players that will be here. Uh, will be pros. They're pros somewhere around the world. You're going to see some talent that you wouldn't think that um, that some countries have. Um, you're going to see some countries that, dang, you know what? I didn't even know they had basketball there, um, which is a, a good thing. I think that uh, you know, we're, basketball is such a global global game. And when you say the senior level teams, I mean this is this is the top top yeah. end, not the. No offense, like not the young kids, yeah, right? Yeah, the yeah, not the youth te- the, not the, the under eighteens team. yeah. or whatever. This is these are the. The teams you see in the Olympics and the yes. teams you see in the in the in the biggest of big tournaments internationally. Yeah, correct. There's a lot of um, you know there's a lot of players that are that are on these teams that are you know at the senior senior level. Um, it is correct. That's correct. What you said as far as the senior level is different. It's not like our age. You know, Josh is not. Now, now we don't mean senior citizens. <laughs> right, right, we right. We mean right, the right. seniors <laughs> of. Uh, you mean the, the seniors of the team in, in inside the uh, their federation. Uh, yeah, so everybody that's vying for Olympic spots and vying for you know, world championships and stuff. So um, it is a it's a niche market in basketball, but uh, it's it's out there. And it's you know it's what goes on, you know, every few years, and it's and, and uh, it's it's one of the things that people 
don't realize that how much talent there is around the world. Now, come on. I'd see you and Eric Snow and Sean Respert, <laughs> some of those dudes you played with back in the day. Michigan said, I'd go see that as senior basketball, all right? That might be, da- that might be dating us a little bit. Well, though, I don't well. know. Well, you know what? I don't, I'm not going to speak up uh, or against my some of my former teammates, but, uh, you know, that I don't think they're in good so, shape. So, can't play anymore. <laughs> That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, so... <laughs> So uh, one tournament each month, yep. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, one series of pool plays mentioned: uh, June, July, August, and then uh, and then the September event, which is the uh, the fourth event. Did you mention uh, had the uh, the pro clubs? Yes, uh, coming. How how did I guess how did Kansas City get in the mix for this? Well, Kansas City, well, twofold. Obviously, everything that they have going on, and and uh, and I live here, <laughs> so uh, I think that that's that was a plus too. But obviously, Kansas City has unbelievable. Uh, the unbelievable ability to to host and to um, to make these these events come off as as, as a great thing, and you know, obviously um, being able to utilize municipal, uh, which is so you know historic, and and uh, and we have that advantage too, you know, having a spot too, and then we've got a great area to draw from, you know, obviously with two point two million in the metro. You know, and um, I think that in the airport now. Oh, the airport oh, is sweet getting, now. Getting, you know what? Getting teams in, right? Hey, hey, yeah. people! Hey, the the guys are gonna get off the plane, and they're gonna be like, "Man, this is a this is a great this is a great thing." Is that can't you know, hurt, right? Yeah, yeah. They, they, it's not a wild wild west airport anymore, but uh, but it's pretty nice now. All right, you played for both uh, Judd Heathcote and Tom Izzo. Correct. We've discussed it a little bit, like self. Izzo, Calipari, kind of the kind of the last of the old guard standing anymore yeah. in college basketball. How long's how long's Coach Izzo gonna kind of stick around? I think he's got about five more years. But it's funny because he always used to say that he wasn't gonna stick around as long as Coach Heathcote did, and he's a coach now, sixty seven. Coach Heathcote retired at sixty eight, so but he's still got a little bit more. He's got you know he's he's got good health on his side, and uh, he's. He's still pushing forward. I mean, I'm old enough to remember when Coach Self was coaching at Oral Roberts when I was in college, and and Coach Calipari was just starting up at UMass, and they both and he was working five star camp every summer. I would see Coach Calipari every summer, and he would always ask me why wouldn't I go to UMass? I said it's too far away. <laughs> it's cold. It's cold. It's colder. Well, it's colder than Northern no, Indiana, no, no. where I'm from. I don't know that East Lansing. <laughs> well, East that, Lansing is that cold. War, yeah, that, that is true. Warm, yeah, all that warm. Either. What do you make though of? Uh, Kind of the turnover. I think I think NILs had a had a strain on a lot of coaches, and and maybe you know there was like okay, this is a kind of a different beast. I better kind of check out. I think that that's cost a, uh, probably a couple really successful coaches the uh, maybe the desire to stick around. And we're we are kind of getting a this kind of major turnover. I think in in terms of you know passing the baton to to the coaching ranks. Yeah, and it's on the both it's on both sides uh it's on both sides of the um you know both sides of the the scale as far as in the men's game and the women's game. Uh in the men's game, it, you know, there's always the NIL is is causing a lot of, you know, movement around what you know? Which school has got the most you know pot you know uh, to NIL? We to get call from. it free agency here. It is free, it is free agency. I just said it's free agency. No doubt now. about it. It <laughs> is free agency. But then on the on the on the on the women's side, you look at Caitlin Clark and you look at Angel Reese. They're they're going to stay in college as long as they can because the NIL money that they're capable of making is more than what the WNBA can pay them. So in the women, it's gonna it's actually going to help the women's game, and it's actually taken away from the men's game. And so obviously, I have to pay attention to both because of the fact that we have not only the men's side, but we have the women's side coming to downtown. You know, obviously in our stuff. But it's a it's an interesting thing. It's it's it, it literally is the wild wild west with eleven hundred kids in the portal. Like you know, sometimes we can only. We would have those thoughts of uh, wanting to transfer. <laughs> like it'd be like thirty seconds in practice. Like I want to get out of here, and then it's like, no, I don't want to get out of here. <laughs> it's a little more difficult then, too. Yeah, it's a little bit more but difficult. But from that perspective, I mean, you played. Um, mm-hmm. From that perspective, it's not all bad, right? I mean, sometimes a coach and player don't jive. Your 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 role isn't what you thought it was going to be. Like I can I can kind of play both sides of that. Where being able to to go to to somewhere that was a better fit for you. Yeah. Um, is is a good thing, and, and coaches could walk at any at any time, right? Without right. any without any, I guess, punishment or having to sit out a year or whatever. I yeah. I think to a certain extent, being able to have player movement isn't the worst thing, right? And a lot of times, and this goes all the way back to when you're being recruited. 
you know, a lot of young young players now, they want to go above what they really are. And so then when they get there and you're stuck in the fray and you're not getting playing time, now it becomes a problem. Now you and coach don't see eye to eye because, you know, you wanted to come there and now you're really, your talent does not speak for the program that you're at. So now it's time like, hey, I got to, you know, I got to get out of here. And then you, you may transfer. And then now you don't want to go down a level because you've been up in a power five. And now you think that you're too good for the mid-major when you should have been at a mid-major to start off. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you know, being a Division One basketball player, that is a that is a monumental thing in itself. I mean, there's not too many people walking this earth can say that they were a Division One basketball player. So, you know, some of the young kids need to take it as, as is and go where you go where you fit in at. And I guarantee you'll stick there out there more often than not. David Bethea joins us here on 610 Sports Radio. And also, I I think at some point, I think we're at the, the kind of the Wild West phase of, of oh, NIL. Yeah, yeah. And I think at some point it will somehow, some way kind of round back in. But also, I feel like it's a little bit of the scenario that you stepped into because it wasn't dealt with for such a long yes. time. Because I, yeah. I don't have a problem with... with uh, student athletes making money mm-hmm. and and kind of making a living and yeah. earning their worth yeah. it just hasn't been that forever mm-hmm. i think that's a little portion as well of the of the of the coaches like yeah. we're around under yeah. this system <laughs> i don't want to be around under this yeah. but now the pendulum's just really swung the other direction at least for now yeah it has and and a lot of times you know in in college sports like you know you know people always had a problem with us you know making money um we can't work during the school year it's illegal we're not allowed to have a job, um, but we're allowed. We have to be students, student athletes. We have to go to class. We have to do everything that a student has to do. Yes, we do. We're on scholarship, but at the same time, we're not allowed to do the same. A lot of the same things that some of the other kids are, are students are being able to do. And you can go into. I remember when I was in school, they were just starting to sell the jerseys. We could go into. We could go into the mall and there's your jersey being sold and you're not going to get a piece of it. Or when I'm old enough to remember when Coach K College Basketball on Sega Genesis came out. Yeah, and, yeah. I played and, that game a lot. Yeah. yeah, and guess what? You know what? In the starting five for Michigan State, <laughs> there was my name, image, and likeness, yeah, and yeah, I yeah. got not a dime yeah, from that. Yeah. So, uh, But uh, it's a it's a thin line, but at the same time, you know, we do – uh, a lot for the universities, and um, you know, hey, it, if it can be controlled, like you said, Josh, and if we can figure it out, like not a wild, wild west, and it's kind of a set thing across the board, it things will smooth itself out. How 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 good was your basketball in Coach K? Was it was it okay? I mean, did you like it? Like the like football players now always get mad right about their uh, their Madden number, you know, yeah. if they're not good enough. How was your how was your game in, in Coach K? Oh, well, I could do it all, man. I was the prototype small forward. I, I liked what they – I guess the coaches lied to the gaming programmers or something. <laughs> I don't know what they did. Your three-point shooting was better? You could step out? Everybody could, everybody could hit a three in that game, if I remember right. Yeah. Uh, my three-point shooting got better as I left Michigan State. And it was okay then. <laughs> you, were, you were better afterwards? Oh, way better. Way better. Way better. All right. How can people uh, – uh, get involved, go to these games, find out more information about these uh, these international games coming up. Well, as we, we're going to continue, we're, we're getting ready to have a launch on uh, ticket sales here in a couple weeks. Um, you know, by May 1st, we're going to launch tickets. If you have any, you know, business inquiries, you can always, uh, well, one, our website is wvse.net. And then uh, if you have inquiries, you can email us at sportsbiz at wvse.net. Um, so we got a lot of things coming up, a lot of new new announcements and um, you know, not only what the teams are going to be for first in June, um, but then also to some of the other things and where you can find us at even uh, on the boob tube, um, you know, what what, you know, broadcast partners we have coming up. So, um, you know, we're we're off and running and, and we, you know, we want to see everybody out there uh, as we uh, as we push through this all summer long. Sixty four games. That's a lot of games, man. Yeah. It's like a, we're, we want to be that, you know, we you know, like you, you know, you can substitute egg whites. You know, when in your meal, you know, we want to be that substitute for that basketball, uh, that, that basketball fix and that high level basketball here in the community. You know, that's what we're, we're pushing forward to for. Should be fun. 
All right. I'll be uh, be looking for you on uh, Big Ten Network uh, Classic Games. That <laughs> couple of those Iowa Michigan State games we were talking, <laughs> no. we were talking about earlier. No, no, because no? we always lose those no, games, man. I, they always put y'all on there. That, that's, why, that's, said, that's why I'm always watching that game. I they, don't know why. They, they put you guys on there as uh, that's your that's the win you guys get. We get we get uh, they put the younger guys on there for us. They don't ever put none of our old games on because <laughs> the tape is in beta, you know. So all right, when's the next when's the next Michigan State title? It's been a while now. Still a, still a blue blood, right? Uh, well, you know, the I'm two thousands, a long time I, ago, man. I'm in a heart, you know. What, you know what? With Teen yeah, Cleves. Yeah, you know, you guys know where I'm in the middle of right now, right? I'm in the middle of Jayhawk and yeah. K State, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. I cried when we lost to K State, and you know, and and then, you know, we're in Mizzou country, but. Michigan State cuts down the nets twenty twenty four. Okay, all right, you're right there. <laughs> but that's my that those that's are your pick every year. That's my yeah, pick yeah, every year. Yeah. I don't. I never do brackets because yeah. every time in my bracket it ends up. They was like, well, "Why don't you be realistic?" I was like, "I am realistic <laughs> in my mind." That's right. <laughs> Who was Michigan. better at Michigan State, Mateen Cleaves or Draymond Green? Mateen was. Yeah. Uh, Mateen was a he was a you know he's a natural born leader. Um, right. um, you know it's funny because. I knew Day Day when he was uh, three and four years old. His aunt, uh, his aunt played at Michigan State. Oh, I didn't know that. And so, it, it, yeah, his aunt was on the on the women's team when I was on the men's team. Ah. And he used to come to the games all the time. And uh, his aunt's nickname was Big Job. She was really good. <laughs> she was good. I mean, she was good in the post and all that. So he he got it honest. And then his uncle was a really good basketball player too. Um, so Draymond got it honest and just like Denzel Valentine, yeah. Denzel Valentine's dad played at Michigan state and Denzel was always around all the time and, and, you know, got the state and was off and running. Yeah. Blood runs deep there, doesn't it? It does <laughs> run deep. It's, it's a, it's an interesting place, but, uh, but yeah, but thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's great. And, you know, hopefully I can come back and, uh, Josh, hope I see you out at the games, man. That's right. Yeah, if you man. need an announcer, I heard you're saying a broadcast uh, partner. I do. <laughs> I mean, we, I, you know what, Josh? I'm, I'm, I do, I'm, man. I'm available. Josh, do you hear this? I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Kling man. is your man. I'm let me available. tell you, David. Kling he'll take his is shirt your off. man. <laughs> he'll take so, his shirt off. You let him announce. <laughs> <laughs> no, he can't do that. Listen, you can't take your shirt off. That's one. Two. Two. I don't want to hear all that Hawkeye bull on my broadcast. Okay. If you can, if you can handle those two things, right, Josh, right. you got a job, yeah, I, baby. I complimented Sean Resper a lot. <laughs> hey man, that's what... Sean Resper. That's yeah. not David Bethea. Oh, uh, David Bethea. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna go play some Coach K basketball later. You're gonna shoot yeah. threes for my team. I got team. you, Josh. I'm all hitting right, you up, uh, baby. All right. David Bethea joining us here on 610 Sports Radio. Uh, the uh, the Kelsey brothers have an incident with a car. We need to get to next.